Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm Ben Atherton Zeman and I am the new minister here. During the pandemic, our services have been on YouTube Live, but in recent weeks, we also had an in-person component with folks gathering in our sanctuary to watch together on a television and greet one another in person. I got to be there last Sunday and I met many of you uh, the experience filled my heart, but sadly, with the COVID numbers rising, we made the decision to stop that in-person component for now. Please call me or call the office if you have any questions. I want to give a special welcome uh, for those of us new to our church community. Our community has many beliefs, but we share a common faith that what we do in this world matters and that we are connected to one another and to the earth. So if you believe that an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, if you believe in building bridges, not walls, if you believe that love knows no gender, I have good news. You may have found your church home. I'm still getting settled into my new home here in St. Petersburg and like most of you have been hit hard by the recent heat. I've been running from my air-conditioned car to my air-conditioned home here on Fifth Avenue, uh, or running from my air-conditioned car to my somewhat air-conditioned office at the church. I'm from New England, and maybe you've heard the expression we use, bone-jarring cold. For me, this was bone-jarring heat. It felt like I was on another planet, like, uh, David Bowman in 2001, A Space Odyssey, jetting between my small spacecraft into my larger spacecraft, rushing to close the door before the atmosphere could damage me. Yet every day, I pass people who do not have an air-conditioned car, an air-conditioned home, or a home at all. I got to meet many of my homeless neighbors last Friday for our weekly picnic. People like Mary, Henry and Big Ed do not have a home to go to. I'm so grateful that we as a church community are doing even the smallest thing to help them. And I'm even more grateful that our church community and our denomination are working to change the systems of injustice that cause so much wealth to be concentrated in the hands of so few. Now, the past few days have seen some spectacular storms, thunder and lightning. I confess it was the first time I stayed outside for more than a second. I was able to breathe the cool air. Now, the theological implications of breathing during a storm do not escape me, along with the ability to find peace and direct connection to our living mother goddess as the rain falls around me and the lightning strikes near me. And as the storm named Fred makes its way towards us, I hold you all as I hold Mary, Henry, and Big Ed in my heart. Now I'm so excited for today's worship service, Walking in Balance with the Earth. The worship service is being led by our own Reverend Aaliyah Cannon, along with John Arterton, James Mack, Janae Johnson, and others. If you can stay afterwards and join us in our virtual Zoom coffee hour, that would be wonderful. But even if you can't, I thank you for coming to worship with us today. hills and pastures in their silent majesty. For the stars, for all the heavens, 
sing we our joyful song of peace for the sun for rain and thunder for the seasons harmony for our lives for all creation sing we our joyful praise to thee for the world we raise our voices for the home that gives us birth in our joy we sing returning home to our blue green hills of earth Good morning, my name is Janae Johnson and I'm your Religious Education and Communications Coordinator here at UU St. Pete. This morning I'll be sharing a story for all ages and the story today is What the Turtle Taught Theodora by Gary Kowalski. In his autobiography, Theodore Parker relates that as a child, four or five years old, living on a farm in Roxbury, he was walking through the fields one day, absentmindedly swinging through the tall grass. Now, this was many years ago, in the days before the Civil War, in summertime. He stopped to watch the water bubble along the creek. Then he noticed a turtle sunning itself on the rock. He'd seen other boys use their sticks to strike a turtle and other animals. It was part of what the children thought was fun, just as some children still like to bully and hit those who were weaker than themselves. Often children and grown-ups are copycats, mimicking the behavior of others who seem bigger or stronger than themselves. So young Theodore wanted to be like the other, older boys that he had seen. He had raised his stick in the air, taking aim to preparing to knock the turtle into the water. Then something stopped him. Something seemed wrong about the situation. He looked again at the turtle, quiet and peaceful. Enjoying the summer day is he liked to feel the same warmth of the light of the sun. Had the turtle done any harm to him? Was the turtle so different than himself? Slowly he lowered his stick and walked home thinking about what had happened. So when he arrived home, his mother was there to greet him and he told her about the incident. She listened carefully to Theodore and listened especially carefully when he related how strange, how some strange force inside stopped him from hitting this little animal. Hmm, Theodore, she said, that force inside of you was the voice of conscience. Your moral compass is what points you in the right direction. And if you honor your conscience, you can never go wrong in this world. Theodore Parker grew up to become a Unitarian minister. In fact, one of the greatest leaders our faith has ever known. He became a champion of the defenseless who needed defending. He was a hero in the fight to end slavery in our country. He prayed to Father and Mother God and fought for women's equality and their right to vote. He and his wife had never had children of their own, but he felt a sense of kinship with the whole family of creation something much larger than ourselves. People of all sexes, all races, all forms, all shapes, all. And the image of the holy. And it all started one summer day when he was just a child. A child who saw a turtle and decided to do what was right. So I hope you take this story and hold it near and dear. And enjoy the rest of our sermon for this Sunday. Thank you so much, Aaliyah, for choosing such a beautiful story. You guys have a wonderful day. From a distance, the world looks blue and green, and the snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, the ocean meets the stream, and the eagle takes to flight. 
from a distance that air is harmony and it echoes through the land it's the voice of hope it's the voice of peace it's the voice of everyone from a distance we all have enough and no one is in need there are no guns no bombs and no disease there are no hungry mouths to feed from a distance we are instruments marching in a common band playing songs of hope playing songs of peace they're the songs of everyone god is watching us god is watching us god is watching us from a distance god is watching us god is watching us god is watching us from a distance from a distance you look like my friend even though we are at war from a distance i cannot comprehend what all this fighting's for from a distance there is harmony and it echoes through the land it's the hope of hopes it's the love of loves it's the heart of everyone god is watching us god is watching us god is watching us from a distance god is watching us 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 from a distance Ooh. Good morning everyone. My name is Aliyah Cannon and I'm very happy to bring you this morning's service from the UU Church in St. Petersburg. I serve on the worship committee as well as the membership committee and it's something that I really enjoy being a part of. I also love to bring you these services. As you may know from previous services, I am a minister in the Druid faith. But long before I discovered the Druid faith, I was very drawn to Buddhism. There is something I'd like to bring you this morning from the Eightfold Path that might help you during these times of COVID resurgence and political unrest at our state level. There are eight holiday celebrations in the pagan calendar. Four of them are marked by solar events, the two equinoxes and the two solstices. The other four are called fire festivals, and that's because they're always celebrated with a big bonfire. The most recent of these was Lunasa. It started about August 1st, and in ancient times, these were known to last almost the entire month long. Lunasa was the first big grain harvest of the year. These celebrations were always marked with lively music, the showings of crafts, and uh, lots of sporting events, but there were also a time of peace. No courts were held in session, no taxes were levied, people didn't war with each other, it was truly a time of peace and plenty when people came together. Out here in Florida, a feeling of peace is a bit more rare these days. 
Unfortunately, with our governor, who tends to put the value of the dollar over our neighbors or our children's lives, it leaves us wondering what's going to happen next. And it's really important that we try to find some peace in our lives and some balance so that we can keep hope alive and keep moving forward. During these kind of times, this is when I return to nature, even if it's only within my backyard. I sit out here and I listen to the blue jays cackle, the squirrels argue with each other, the birds chatter away in the limbs of the trees, and I feel a little bit more safer from the outside world. This is where I find my harmony, my balance, my peace. Rachel Carson has a quote. She said, there is something infinitely healing in the repeated refrains of nature. And when Bette Midler sang from a distance, she sang, there are no guns, no bombs, no disease, no hungry mouths to feed. From a distance, there is harmony throughout the land. And here in my little sacred space of the backyard, there is some harmony. And we all need this in our lives during these times. I imagine looking down on all these, these backyards and thinking that it's like an ancient mandala of blue and green. And all the streets that interconnect are like the song lines from the Aborigines that connected events of their creation. And I imagine that uh, perhaps there is still some harmony here that can be traced back into the present times. That this chaos, this difficulty is only temporary. We have made it this far and we will make it the rest of the way together. But as any good gardener knows, you can't raise healthy plants without the right amount of sunshine, soil, and water. My dad used to love to work in the garden. He, he said a garden doesn't grow itself. It needs the right kind of attention. And I kind of thought of him when I, read, when I decided to do this message today. He said, yeah, maybe you have a garden in your yard, but what are you planting in it? Is it lush and green? Is it full of flower blooms? Is it filled with beautiful plants and birds that take your mind off of everyday struggles? I recently read in a book called The Mist-Filled Path by Frank McEwen that what we see in our surroundings is often mirrored within ourselves. And what we see within ourselves, we often notice in our surroundings. On the Buddhist Eightfold Path, there are three paths that can lead to many experiences of harmony. These are right speech, right action, and right livelihood. But the one I'd like to talk about today is right speech. Now generally this refers to don't lie, don't deceive people, don't be rude, and don't abuse people with your language. We all know words have power. They can heal, they can harm, they can divide, but they can unify. Well, I don't think speech, especially right speech, is only an external dialogue. How do we speak to ourselves? What are we planting in our inner garden? Are we using the right ingredients to plant the best chance of success and harmony? And that's where walking in balance with the earth comes from because it's not just about our footsteps on the earth beneath our feet, but it's how we walk in balance with ourselves. We need to be compassionate with ourselves as well. And when we grow self-compassion, we can reap in our harmony and achieve that balance, just like our gardens. Now our backyards, our nature spots that we go to to forget about the outside world sometimes, you might think a sign of these times has been mixed messages. But with harmony, we find the peace 
to see things with a little bit more clarity and understanding. And when we see things with clarity and understanding, we have a much better chance to forge ahead, to remain strong, and to pass by all these obstacles facing us now. So today I hope that you will go out into your surroundings and take a look. Look at the birds, the butterflies, blue jays sitting on the fence chattering away. And then I want you to go inside and I want you to take a look at the garden that you're growing in your heart. How are you speaking to yourself? Are you achieving balance? Are you speaking to yourself with harmony and compassion? I think we will all make it through this time. And I think we will do just fine as long as we work together. Thank you. This pretty planet spinning in space Your garden, your harbor your holy place. Golden sun going down, gentle blue giant spin us around all through the night. Safe till the morning light. This pretty planet Spinning in space, your garden, your harbor, your holy place. This pretty planet, sun going space, your garden, your harbor, your holy place. This pretty planet, sun going space, your gentle blue giant. Your spin us around all through the sun going down, gentle child, spin us around all through the night, safe till the morning To keep our congregation thriving, may we remember our connection to one another. And let us not forget our contributions to support the means to those connections. If you're watching today on a mobile device or computer, please hover your finger or cursor in the upper right corner of your screen and click on the I in the small white circle. You can also donate at uusp.org under the Giving tab or by sending a check to the church office. Many thanks. In closing today, I'd like to remind you that following this service, there will be a coffee hour on Zoom where we can interact a little bit more with each other since our currently our watch parties are on pause. I hope that very soon things will change, but if they do not, remember we have each other. In Plato's Timaeus, he expounds upon the theory of the parallels between the universe and the human body. Microcosm and macrocosm can be used to reinforce the philosophy of right speech. What we say in a smaller context with ourselves, we can say in a context to affect the greater macrocosm of the world. When we speak from a place of compassion, 
we should do that in both places. Perhaps it is part of the great mystery that what we see within ourselves, we find within our surroundings sometimes, and what we find within our surroundings, we also see within ourselves. So it leads one to believe if we plant the seeds of compassion, the seeds of understanding, balance, harmony, within our unity, within our community, I meant to say, then why can't we plant them within ourselves as well? I'd like to leave us a brief meditation on mindfulness. And I want you to think back on that quote by Rachel Carson, that, that there is something infinitely healing in the cons in constant refrains of nature. Take a deep cleansing breath, exhale, and listen to me. Waking up this morning, I smile. 24 brand new hours are before me. I vow to live fully in each moment and to look upon all beings, including myself, with eyes of compassion. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in this wonderful present moment together. In, out, deep, slow, calm, ease. Smile and release. Present moment, wonderful moment. And now let us release the flame from our chalice. We extinguish this flame. Oh, I hope you are repeating after me now. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth. The warmth of love or the fire of courage. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. Now I hope you will take a look at what is growing within yourself and plant further seeds of compassion, harmony, and balance. And blessed Lunasa, may you reap many blessings from your harvest season. Thank you for joining us and I look forward to seeing you in our coffee hour.